Hey guys! So, I got a really cool opportunity this week to test out the Dexcom G6 sensor. Woohoo! Woohoo! Super excited because the sensor is going to be great. There's no calibrations. It's supposedly super accurate. So, I'm really excited. You guys may already know I currently wear the Medtronic 670G pump. And that has its own sensor too. I was thinking about it and I'll already be wearing two sensors so I might as well also wear a third sensor which would be the Freestyle Libre. I figured it'd be a good opportunity to go through the different sensors, talk about sensor wear, insertion, and positive and negatives of, of all the different types of sensors. Okay, so first let's talk about the Dexcom G6 Basics. It's a 10-day sensor that measures your glucose levels every five minutes. It can be viewed on your phone in real time. It's approved for use in the abdomen only and requires a two hour warm up period. Are you ready for the best part? No calibrations are required. What? It's pretty amazing. You're required to put a code into your receiver that is specific to that sensor. Now, what does this mean for all you Dexcom users out there? It means no sensor flipping. Oh. If you don't input the code, the Dexcom G6 will work similarly to the G5 and will require two calibrations a day. One of the things I really like about the Dexcom G6 is that it has shared technology, which allows people to follow your Dexcom readings and see them in real time. Why is this so helpful? You can set up the Share app to alert your followers when your blood sugars are dangerously high or dangerously low. Everyone needs backup, so this is really great for people who live alone. It's also awesome for parents to be able to see their kids' readings on their own phone while their kid still has the CGM readings on their personal phone as well. Okay, so I'm going to place this sensor right here. I already cleaned the area with alcohol, and it's all dry. So first thing I need to do is take off the sticky tape. Next, I'm going to place the sensor where I want it to be located, on my lower abdomen. I'll remove the lock. And then I just have to press the button. That didn't even hurt. And lift straight off. Easy peasy. Okay, now I'll attach the transmitter. And then I have this overlay tape to make sure it stays on. Wow, that was really easy. The Dexcom G6 sensor is 30% smaller than the other Dexcom sensors. As you saw, they also changed the auto inserter to make it really easy. Just one push of a button and that's it. So simple. It's also the only CGM approved for really little kids. Two and up, in fact. How cool is that? Let's talk about the Freestyle Libre. Freestyle has a 10-day sensor wear. It requires a 12-hour warm-up period and is approved for ages 18 and up. And guess what? No calibrations are required for this one either. The only time you need to do a finger stick is when the symbol appears on the reader. It also has a built-in blood sugar meter into the reader, which is super convenient. All that's required is a prescription and you can pick it up at any pharmacy. The out-of-pocket cost is also very affordable when compared to the other sensors. I have the inserter, the sensor, and the reader. I'm going to open up the sensor, then I open the inserter, line up this little opening with the line on the sensor container. You push down to load the sensor and pull straight up. Now insertion is easy. All you have to do is place it on your skin and push down and this blue part is going to retract into the gray and insert the sensor for you.
Now you pull straight up. Voila! The last thing to do is actually start the sensor. So I'm going to go to the PDM and press Start New Sensor. And it's telling me exactly what to do. Scan sensor to start it. And it says 12-hour warm-up started. Calibre does not alarm you unless you scan it. Although this can be good because it leads to less alarm fatigue, it also doesn't allow for so much proactivity. The Libre also won't alarm you if you're in a dangerous situation, such as hypoglycemia overnight. You can, however, visualize trends in low glucose events on the reader. Okay guys, so now we're going to go over insertion of the Medtronic Guardian sensor. I have my sensor, transmitter on the charger, and my inserter right here. So first thing I'm going to do is clean with a little alcohol. While I wait for that to dry, I'm going to load the sensor into the inserter. The way I like to do it is by putting it on a flat surface and then pressing down. Then you're going to place two fingers over the plastic prongs and pull straight up. And voila, your sensor's loaded. For my leg insertion, I usually try to pull the, the little extra bit of fat out to the outer part of my leg to get a little bit more cushion and then sit on it so that it kind of sticks out a little bit. Then you're going to place the sensor in the location that you want and simply press the green buttons. And that's it. Now you want to make sure you pull straight up because the needle is still in there and it can mess with the sensor if you knock it around. So then you're going to hold the sensor in place and pull straight out and the needle will will retract into itself. Next, you're going to take off the bottom sticky part by just pulling and pressing down. And then you're going to connect the transmitter. So you take it off the charger. I call it a little bumblebee butt. And then you're going to connect it, and you'll hear a little click. Now you want to wait and make sure that after you connect that you see a green light. Oh, there it is. And that means that it's connected and it's, that it's working well. Now all, all that's left to do is secure it down. So I have it secured. And then I feel a buzz from my pump because it detects a new sensor. So I'm just going to say yes, that I want to start new sensor. And that's it. I'm in the warm up. Here are the Guardian Sensor 3 Basics. It's approved for ages 14 and up, requires two to three calibrations a day, and has a two hour sensor warm up period. Since it is not a standalone system, we have to talk about it in conjunction with the 670G pump that it runs with. So far, 41,000 patients are on the 670G with the Guardian 3 sensor. Of the 41,000 patients, their estimated A1C is approximately 7.1%. That's pretty darn good. These patients also have less than 0.3% of their blood sugars below 50. Why do we even care so much about A1C? We used to think it was a good predictor of how we were doing, but it doesn't account for fluctuations in blood sugar. Someone with a lot of lows can still have a near-perfect A1C. Clinicians now are starting to look closer at time and range. On average, the 41,000 patients spend 72.1% of their time between the numbers 70 and 180. At night, this number goes up to 76.9%. All of this with only 0.2% of their time spent below 50. This system can provide invaluable peace of mind for not only patients, but their loved ones as well. Overall, I had a really fun time doing this experiment. And the best thing that I learned was that all the sensors are amazing. They're all very accurate, and I found them all to be very comfortable as well. All in all, I think there's something out there for everybody. I hope you guys learned something about CGMs today. Bye.